Hello, we are Team Cyborg. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out. Uh, presenting today, we have Greg Bustamante, Jack Hickman, Eric Kang, Greg Marifian, Shale Mbwete, Nidhi Nari, and myself, Gregory Wolf. Oh, yeah. And uh, also joining us today, we have C.S. Cyborg and his baby brother, Turtle, about standing behind him. Uh, so we'd like to start by giving you all a little bit of a background on the motivation behind this project. Um, as all of you probably know, campus sewers are essential to recruitment at universities everywhere. And we have this shiny new CSI building that we're trying to really promote. And so what we want to do is come up with a way, uh, to a unique and impressive way, uh, to showcase this building. And so at the beginning of this academic year, we were tasked with developing and implementing an automated tour guide for the Center for the Sciences and Innovation building here at Trinity. Uh, it was required that the robot must safely and semi-autonomously navigate the building while also providing relevant information to the tourists. So the following are the constraints that we had to adhere by. We had to make sure that our robot did not harm the surroundings and the people around it. We had a $6,200 budget from CLT in the engineering department that we did not have to exceed. We had a payload on our robot that we had to work around during our design stage. Um, we also had to work around the cost of moving furniture, the glass, and the carpet around CSI. Another of our constraints uh, pertained to the people on the tour. We had to, this included things like the speed of the tour, the height of the robot, the language. We had to take care of this in order to accommodate everyone on the tour, either tall, short, old, or young. Our tour time had to be less than 30 minutes so that we wouldn't bore the people because we all know the human brain can only take so much information at a time. Our last constraint was to ensure that our robot did not die while we were on tour. So the main goal of our project is to successfully give a tour comparable to a real tour. To start off our project, we received several tour bus from the engineering department. These story bots came with the ROS version movie. The ROS is basically the robot's operating system. It's what controls the robot and allows it to interface with the computer using software. With courtesy of the ROS packages, our story bots came with already built-in navigation capabilities. So we didn't have to worry about creating this lower level functions. So once we had the robots, we, had, we decided that we were going to split our project into three different subgroups, and that was the hardware, software, and multimedia. We did this so that we could focus on the separate parts of the project, more like a divide and conquer aspect. Okay, so now we're gonna to talk to you more about how the different subgroups that I mentioned earlier uh, contributed to a successful project. Uh, so, as Charles just mentioned, uh, we were split up into three different subgroups, and now uh, the multimedia group was in charge of putting together all of the different uh, media and visual things that you basically see on the tour. Uh, this included going on different tours to get the tour script, so uh, we went on tour with all the different department heads and the tour guides themselves to try to get as much information as we could so that we could uh, project the correct information that we wanted to uh, the tourists, I guess you call them. Um, the next thing we focused on was creating all the media. So all the videos, all the audio files, everything that you basically see and experience on the tour would have been created by us. <coughs> the next step was creating a GUI, which stands for graphical user interface. And this is how the tourists interact with the robot itself. So if you look at the screen, you see that this is a, a screenshot of our GUI itself. It has a start button and a reset button so that the user can basically just wrap up with the robot Last thing that we worked on was the logo itself, so you see down there, is this is the sideboard. And um, this is basically so that we can kind of like brand the robot as well as like putting on like any problem areas so that we can avoid like parking and glass and so on. So in order to effectively convey all this media to our tourists, we also developed a hardware team. And the goal of the hardware team was to design devices, implement devices that would not only contribute to the overall quality of the tour, but also keep us within this important weight constraint so that we're not adding too much so that cyborg would not move. Specifically, we had to focus on a couple things. First, we had to figure out a way to project media. 
this was important because this is how our, our tourists are going to see what their, all these visuals on the tour. We also had to figure out a way to play audio, which is important because we, if it's a big group, for instance, we need everyone to be able to hear clearly what we're trying to convey to them. We also had to develop an interface that would allow the tourists to go up and um, select the tour, uh, and then this, we had to specifically get a device that would allow us to do this besides the Finally, we had to create an optimal height, both for aesthetics and also, as Shala mentioned, for a multitude of people on our tour. So, what we first did was we purchased these devices. Other than the turn button you see on the far left, the next thing we purchased was a JBL Flip 2 speaker, which was not only the best in its class, it was pretty lightweight, but it was also important because it displayed the highest quality volume at high volumes, which is important because if we're projecting to the lab group, we need everybody to be able to hear. The next thing we purchased was this projector here, the Asus P2P projector. And it's, it's brilliant because it, it um, combines both portability and projection into a device that allows us to put it on our robot. We also purchased a projection screen, as you can see in the middle, which helps with the contrast and accentuating the colors a little bit of the projector so that people can see what we're projecting. And finally, we also implemented a Microsoft Surface Pro 3. And this is important because this is what runs our GUI and it runs our code. And it's important also because it's a, a very beautiful device that sits right up front and it'll be a waveform as you may see eventually. Jack's not going to talk about what we 3D printed. All right. So, as my teammate said before, our robot had a weight limit on it, 11 pounds. So that actually is everything. It does not include everything except for the very bottom of the robot. So all the additional hardware that's already on the robot counts in the 11 pound limit. So really, we're more limited to about 7 pounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to design different things that would be as lightweight as possible, but would also attach our devices to our turtle bike, um, as well as what really what we're going to do. So what we did is we went through different iterations, and we came up with this tower design, as you see here, and on the screen. Uh, we thought this kind of just gave our robot a little more trinity feel, or just kind of a little black thing walking around. Um, so we designed the tower, and ended up painting it. Uh, it's a little, it'll get close up in a second. Um, so the tower shows a couple different purposes. It holds the surface on top of the tower, as well as hide a bunch of boards that would otherwise just be hanging off the robot. So next, we printed and designed this surface or the projector mount. As you see there, it's two parts uh, that screw together to encase the projector as well as just block into the robot. Third, you can't I can see it yet. There's two brackets underneath the robot that uh, hold the solid speaker to the robot. Lastly, we had to come up with a new plate design. Once we put all of our uh, electronics and 3D printed objects on the robot, we were at about 12, 13 pounds. So we had to come up with a way to get at just at the 11 pound limit. So we were kind of you know, messing around with the things. Uh, ended up building, we uh, cut out just some different shapes. We ended up taking about a pound and a half off the total limit. So that, we thought that was pretty good. So right now, this is our current design, as you guys can see. And uh, now we're actually doing a little interactive thing so you guys can better see the robot.
And you can look at it. So there, it actually clearly looks like the tower. Um, and we, yeah, we've got a lot of good feedback on this part of our project. Right here is the projector. Beautiful. And under here, right here, this is where the speaker is. And so we kind of like that you can't see where the speaker is. Like, first off, when it starts talking, it's kind of like, oh, wow, that's really loud. You can't really figure out where it's coming from. Um, so we think it's a pretty cohesive, good looking unit. So next, yeah. Next, we're going to talk to you guys about the software.
that, that would scare you all pretty quickly. That would also warn people around CSI that something's wrong. Come check the robot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 